good afternoon family good afternoon good afternoon how are we all doing today today is day three of our pre-marriage fast and i am so excited to have you all here uh today we're gonna be dealing with shame guilt and insecurity so i'm super excited to have you here we are diving deeper and deeper until we literally have no baggage and are just ready to move forward we're also dealing with bitterness bitterness from our past bitterness from the things that have happened to us that were actually beyond our control so welcome family welcome welcome basically the reason for this fast is that the lord is getting ready to do to spread to give out to pour out a revival and if revival is to start it's got to start with the families it starts in families it starts in kingdom families then it moves from kingdom families to the extended family to the community to your country to your continent in our case from africa and then to the world so there needs to be a kingdom man and a kingdom woman coming together and that way we will have a kingdom revival which i'm so excited about thank you so much for joining uh now we're gonna jump right into it and we're gonna start by just praying and releasing all forms of bitterness that may have come as a result of uh what we went through when we we're young so a lot of us were molested a lot of us felt neglected by our families a lot of us feel unappreciated by our bosses a lot of us just feel unappreciated even by our family by our parents despite the efforts that we put into the things that we are doing for them so i just want us to take this moment even to pray do pray Pray along do drop in the comments um, uh, as you pray along you know the drill let's keep it moving let's keep it going is even as I am praying I'll also be reading what you guys are praying in the comments and saying it out loud or rather praying it out loud so I'm gonna start now father in the name of jesus we release all forms of bitterness that may have resulted as a result of us being molested when we're young father we release every uncle every aunt every helper every house help that molested us in one way or another we release them in the name of jesus we release them we want to move forward and you don't want to keep holding that baggage back in the name of jesus father we ask even that you heal our hearts of hearts oh god from the pain that came as a result of that um, experience in the name of jesus father we release even our parents for the things that we went through the times that they divorced father we release ourselves even from whatever we saw going on the fights the continual fighting we release ourselves and we release them even from that in jesus's name we forgive our parents even for being too busy if we felt neglected in any way or another we release them oh god in the name of jesus we pray asking you father that you would touch our hearts oh god that you would release all forms of bitterness from the inside of us oh god we pray father releasing every one whom we held but they didn't recognize the efforts that we were placing in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, we release even our bosses for not recognizing the amount of efforts that we are putting in our work and even for not recognizing us enough to be able to just acknowledge the work that we're doing we release them even in this moment and we release any bitterness that may be connected to us we also release our pastors we release men and women of god who mistreated us who hurt us in the past oh god we release them oh god for every time we felt unappreciated by them we felt that they didn't love us they didn't respond on time we release them and we let go of that bitterness in the name of jesus and we make room for you to come and fill our hearts oh god oh father we say yes to you this afternoon we say yes to your leading we say yes to being filled by you 
you father that as we continue to let go we make room for you oh god to dwell in our hearts to dwell in our lives in jesus name father we pray oh god for everybody who feel who we feel that they didn't give us what we deserved for the work that we put in we pray releasing our bosses for not acknowledging the work that we put in we pray for and release all childhood trauma that has made us sad in the name of jesus we release our siblings for not appreciating the efforts that we put in in jesus name we ah shikana makasa we forgive our siblings for them simply not acknowledging when we actually make an extra effort for our parents in the name of jesus we release them just as you have forgiven us oh god we forgive them oh god in the mighty name of jesus we release anger uh that we have towards god god we release the anger that we have hold, held on to and harbored for long that we've kept close to our hearts because we didn't understand how we lost our loved ones and we release them now in the name of jesus father we release anger it's for not having much when growing up the poverty that we grew up in and we release them we release all of that in jesus name we release everyone who rejected us when we most needed them oh god we release our friends we release our workmates in the mighty name of jesus we release friends who told our secrets that we told them in confidentiality in privacy and they still shared those secrets and we ask father that father even as we release them oh god let space for you oh god let our wine skins be expanded oh god to receive the new wine that you have for us in this season uh we forgive ourselves and we forgive uh our friends for the friendship breakups that we've had and we just release them we release them into joy meeting new friends ah uh, we ask for forgiveness for all the times that we have questioned you oh god for the things that you have allowed to happen in our lives in jesus name uh we, re we release fathers who were absent in Jesus' name. Every father whom we felt was not there for us when we needed them the most. We release them in Jesus' name. We forgive and release people that laughed at our failures when we failed in school, when we made a speaking mistake, when we stammered, when we fell. Father, we release all those experience that, as experiences that we continue to hold on but that today we release them in Jesus' name we release people that have mocked us and said that would amount to nothing in the name of Jesus we release stepmothers and stepfathers who mistreated us who pretended to love us when the other spouse was there when our dad was there when our mom was there but mistreated us when the other parent wasn't there father we release them even in this moment we release absent fathers in Jesus' name we release everybody who said hurtful things behind our backs and we found out about it we release everybody that says bad things that said bad things behind our back everybody that muds lead us in Jesus' name we release them uh we release you oh god we ask father that even in this moment oh god we release the anger that we have harbored against you for a long time for the opportunities that we thought you would give us but you said no for your nose father we release that anger in jesus name we release failures that we carry with us every day we release experiences that affected our self-esteem in the name of jesus ah we thank you father we honor you and we bless your most holy name. Amen. 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 Now we want to move on to praying um, and just understanding what shame and guilt actually does and the things that we ourselves have to forgive ourselves so that we'll be able to move on. We have to forgive ourselves, particularly for those of us who have committed abortions. We actually ask that oh my god that god would heal us and enable us strengthen our minds to be able to move on from this like i said yesterday god has already healed us god has already forgiven us but now it's a matter of us saying now we're actually moving forward we're not going backwards but we are moving forward amen so we want to forgive ourselves for um 
oh my god for committing abortion i want us to understand that we are no longer known as murderers no one no shame no guilt can keep us back from you then feeling like you don't deserve a good marriage you don't deserve to have good children healthy children children who love the lord who serve the lord because of a mistake that you made under the circumstances that pressed you hard enough for you to actually make that decision so i want you today to let go of that shame and guilt that's keeping you from moving forward particularly in the area of abortion for cohabiting for having multiple sexual partners sometimes you feel like how am i gonna i don't deserve a good husband i don't deserve to even stand in the presence of the lord because of the things that i've done in the past but one thing is for sure that who the son sets free is free indeed and we've been redeemed once and for all we don't need god to keep redeeming us over and over again but just once is enough to set our lives on fire and that we move forward amen so i want to just explain a little bit about what actually happened in the account of adam and eve in terms of shame and guilt so in Gen in genesis chapter 3 verse 11 we see that after they had eaten the fruit right uh that's when they got the leaves and tried to cover themselves and now in genesis 3 11 the lord asked them who told you that you were naked which gives us a clear indication that satan or one of his unclean spirits were actually the ones that were telling adam and eve in their mind right that they were naked so they should be afraid of them or they should be ashamed that's why they decided to hide themselves so that people do not see so shame did not enter this world until this very moment this very adam and eve moment uh, and it came about as a spirit that spoke that whispered through their thoughts i want you to understand the power of your thoughts the power of what actually happens in your brain so they were so ashamed that they not only covered themselves but hid themselves in the garden from god like imagine this scenario they are in the garden of eden and we're saying god is omnipresent he's in all places at all times they are trying to hide from this same god come on come on you can't hide from god but that's what shame does it leads you to hide from the very same man who's supposed to redeem you who's supposed to save you so notice how shame brought dreaded fear of god because now they were in hiding before that moment they they were in communion with god the bible literally says that around the time when they were in the cool of the day the lord would walk in the garden would talk and commune and commune of koinonia with adam and eve but it's in this very moment that they just felt no we don't deserve this anymore and that actually happens to a lot of us where we now feel unworthy we feel like literally there's like cow dung all over our faces cow dung all over our spirits that we don't deserve the love and the affection and the forgiveness of god yet we understand just how much the lord loves us how much ah how much god loves us how much that even before the creation of the earth jesus was there waiting to be sacrificed for us in the case that we made the same era that the devil made i mean come on ah guys <laughs> i'm feeling this thing you know what i mean so they were now ashamed of their bodies and didn't want god their own creator who created them and breathed into them to see them naked and it shouldn't surprise us when we see how the enemy tries to make um uh, our sexuality or the sins that we have done shameful in the same way and usually it's sad but it's true that shame usually comes through the door of sexual sin and we have repented we have confessed already so we don't need to keep on holding on to that i know like sometimes it's hard like you feel like you still need to talk to someone so for those that are in the prayer group please feel free if you still feel like the burden is too much for you the bible actually says in john james 5 16 confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed so it's so important that we get to a place where if the shame and guilt is constantly on your throat seeking to take you down that you reach out to somebody you actually confess your sins because what the devil wants is for you to keep quiet 
a lot of believers who keep quiet with this shame with this sin and it leads to the devil really dealing with you in private because now he knows you're shameful now you see yourself you're not going to church that's the next thing you don't want to be amongst a community of believers so much such that now the devil can mess you up mess with your mind deal with you lead you to depression uh suicidal thoughts all of that comes <laughs> as a result of shame and guilt because now you're depressed now you are on antidepressants now you actually have to take medication just because of this shame and guilt that you're feeling and now it extends to you wanting to just take your life because you can't bear it anymore but what if you just confessed one to another what if you just went before the lord and told him about this thing that's the beauty about god he wants you he knows what you're struggling with but he wants you to also tell him that's communication that's communion with the father wow okay i think i've explained that well enough that there's so much power in our thoughts there's so much power that enables us to move forward and satan wants to use discouragement to believe us that's the only trick that he has that deception that's discouragement and we begin to become lukewarm and lukewarm and lukewarm because of shame and guilt but ah the devil is a liar the devil is a liar that's where it ends today so i want us to take a moment to just silence every voice of the enemy that voice that says that look at the sin which you committed five years ago five years ago come on a sin that i committed in the morning <laughs> a sin that i committed five seconds ago right now as i'm speaking the fact that i have come before god and say lord i am sorry for everything that i've done with a broken and contrite heart really with a repentant heart the lord has already forgiven me and that sin no longer holds value it no longer holds a place in my life even in this moment but the devil will try and tell you from five years ago that that sin is still holding you back he will tell you that you're such a failure that was so bad but jesus through god's words tries to tell you that if you turn to him you will be forgiven and your past will be forgotten and in isaiah 43 verse 25 he says i yes i alone am the one who blots out your sins for your own sake and will never think of them again the lord will never think about our sins again it's in your mind god like the record ah my god there is no record of your sin at this point there is no record of your sin god no longer thinks about it so why are you still thinking about it unless it's to give a testimony why are you still thinking about it yes forgiven and forgotten but you you're still holding on it's similar to holding a grudge against someone who does not even know that you have an issue with them so it's you that's harboring the resentment that's harboring the bit bitterness but this person has since moved on do you understand what i'm saying they have moved on so we are faced with a choice to either listen to satan's life that you're a failure or you listen to what god's word actually says to you which says that therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new which means that we are literally new creatures we are stepping into a new dimension ah she can't have a hustle. ah i'll keep going and going but this is prayer not a preaching uh so i want us to get into a time let's just pray and say no really my past is my past i'm a new creature let us declare that in the comments father in the name of jesus i thank you that no stronghold of the mind nothing that the devil whispers in my heart in my mind in my soul ever has a hold over me in jesus name i thank you for oh thank you that i'm a new creature thank you that you have blotted away all of my sins for my sake and you never think about them again in jesus name i thank you father that you have released me you have given me a new wine skin it is no longer i that lives but you that lives on the inside of me thank you father that all things are passed away my past is in 
did my past and now new things have come old things have become new i thank you that nothing in my mind is bigger than the truth of your word in the mighty name of jesus i thank you that father no darkness from the enemy illuminates us ah, shikadaba darkness has no power in my mind for i am the light of the world and your light illuminates in my mind it removes all of the darkness all the voices from the enemy that it tries to plant in my mind that keeps me bound in the name of jesus thank you father that my past is my past and it does not hold my future in the mighty name of jesus i thank you father that you have sent your word you have healed me and delivered me from my destruction in the name of jesus i thank you father for your blood the blood of jesus that blots away my sins that though i was undeserving but you have made me deserving in the name of jesus thank you father that i can approach your throne and speak to you and you forgive me thank you father that i live because you have bought me back you have redeemed me in the name of jesus thank you father that though i may not be perfect but jesus christ is perfect and he gave himself as a perfect sacrifice for me since i am hidden in him he has paid my debt which i could never pay for by myself thank you father that i'm not a failure thank you father that voices that remind me that i am nothing are laid down on the ground in the name of jesus they are holds into captive by jesus christ himself thank you father that i am clean i am new and i'm alive in christ i've lo- i've been loved with an everlasting love and his love covers me thank you father that oh god thank you father that your love expects nothing in return except surrender to you oh god ah thank you father in jesus name just as you forgave david oh god thank you for forgiving us even in this day and age thank you father for creating in us a clean heart removing that mentality that is instilled by the devil to give us a new understanding a new revelation of who we are in you thank you that no sin no shame no past is bigger than what you say about me what you say about me is what stands when the devil reminds me of my past may i remind me him of you also may i remind him also that he was cast away from heaven in jesus name thank you that you have renewed us father thank you father that you are enough so that i can be enough since i am hidden in you since i am seated in heavenly places in christ jesus amen Amen. Now we want to talk about insecurities. I'm not going to preach on this one, I promise. So insecurities. An insecurity is basically a sense of inferiority, a sense of unworthiness, a sense of unworthiness where you feel you don't deserve a promotion, you don't deserve a good marriage, you don't deserve good things, you don't deserve a good job, you don't deserve to... uh, talk to the president you just feel like you're undeserving i don't know if you get what i'm saying and the sad thing about insecurities is that insecurities can abort your destiny and even your marriage since this is a pre-marriage fast it can abort your marriage (laughs) insecurities will cause you to be all up in your husband's phone every single day every single time because you're insecure about what i don't know but that's what insecurities does insecurities can lead to divorce if we're not careful about it so jeremiah says when god says i have my before i formed you in your mother's womb i knew you i set you apart i called you as a prophet to the nations this is what it says i am only a child come on the lord has just given him a prophecy the lord has told him that he has created him for something greater something amazing something that he cannot even comprehend a prophet to the nations and this is what he says i'm only a child can you see how he was actually about to abort his destiny because he felt small he felt young he was about to abort his destiny but the lord had just given him a mighty but doubt filled his heart doubt filled his heart he felt too young and a lot of us are actually like jeremiah we feel young we feel unqualified we feel like there are other people who can do it better than us 
But that's not what God is saying today. He's saying that you are deserving of a good marriage. You are deserving of a good job. You are deserving of a great destiny. You are deserving to be the top class CEO. You are deserving to be a multi-millionaire, to be a multi-billionaire. You, it is you that is deserving because he has made you deserving. Ah, oh, my God. And a lot of the times we feel like we're doing too much. We feel like we're doing too little. And Moses had to say to God, Lord, but I stammer. Imagine God has told you, you're going to deliver my people out of Egypt. And you, you say, Lord, you know, I'm insecure about the way that I speak. God forbid that happens to you. Like literally God forbid that happens to you who is on this fast. That you say, Lord, because of the way I speak, because of the pimples on my face, because of my eyebrows that are like two eyebrows, because of my hair color, because like, come on. God has so much in store for us. And he wants us to tap into that, which is really, really exciting. And the thing about realizing your destiny and being confident enough and knowing that you're deserving to walk in everything that God has in store for you is that as you walk in it, you also meet your kingdom purpose partner, which is why we're praying and fasting, <laughs> right? As you walk in it, as you walk in your purpose, you meet the person that is right for you. So some of us feel too fat, too thin. You find that there are people that, a lot of people rather, are going to the gym to lose weight and they are on weight loss regimes and, you know, drinking lemon water. But there's also someone who is on a diet so that they can gain weight. <laughs> You see now the thing about insecure, like, okay, like there are times when it's okay to do that. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. But also, when you decide to gain more weight, it shouldn't be because you're insecure about the way that you look. Or when you decide to lose weight, it shouldn't be because you are insecure. Do you get what I'm saying? Ah, my God. So you feel too dark, you feel too light, you feel too tall, you feel too short. Like, things, you, do, you just don't feel worthy, you just don't feel like you're enough. Of which, it's sad, but it's true. But you had no contribution to how you came out of your mother's womb. It was your mother's and your father's, you know, <laughs> over and sperm that decided that for you. So it's really beyond you. So insecurity is, is um, in terms of how we look like is actually beyond us. It's beyond us. And I need us to get to that understanding. It's beyond our control. It happens in the womb. There's nothing you can do. So some of us now hide behind makeup. A lot of us, right? It's it sad that we can't even leave, leave the house without makeup because you feel oh my god how are people gonna look at me but no oh my god we need to get to a point where we are past that so in this moment ah, i'm gonna move on also to imposter syndrome where you try to be a perfectionist in order to mask your insecurities you want to dress too nice like you just want to wow the room ah my god you want to accomplish too much you want to accomplish too much because you have this deep lying insecurity deep down on the inside of you maybe because you once spoke in in um high school and people dissed you you know how people used to go boo you know you probably felt that way but what i love is that god doesn't care about all of that he has made you worthy you are enough for the calling you are enough for this marriage you are enough for your kingdom purpose so a lot of the times when you have imposter syndrome or low self-esteem, you, you want to be a perfectionist so that we don't see your insecurities. Do you get what I'm saying? You try to speak louder than anybody else because you, you want to feel important. You want to feel important. And a lot of the times because of low self-esteem, you always want to make yourself out to be a victim. Yet you're actually not a victim at all. So now, 
this is where i was saying to get your copies of princess to my dad because now we're gonna say what the we're gonna profess remember what we said yesterday that death and life lie in the power of the tongue and the more we say it the more we believe it god is actually gonna be you know reviving that fire on the inside of us that his rhema word what his is logos rather his written word what it says about us now becomes the logos which now becomes the rhema which is the active word right now which is applicable in our lives so this is from page 44 uh so i'm gonna be doing it and please you know fire emojis in the comment section so that we move together and that we really move this from just being a logos to being a rhema word in jesus's name so i am fearfully and wonderfully made i am god's temple and the holy spirit dwells in me if ah she so if the holy spirit truly dwells on the inside of me therefore no insecurity has power in my mind in my thoughts in my feelings in my emotions the holy spirit burns every insecurity in the name of jesus i subject it to the authority of jesus christ in jesus his name i am a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for his possession if i am all this therefore the devil has no power over my life in the name of jesus i'm no longer a slave but i am a son and an heir through my daddy in the name of jesus i'm no longer a slave to sin i'm no longer a slave to inferiority complex i'm no longer a slave to how i look i'm no longer a slave to how tall how dark how fat how thin i am in the name of jesus but i stand as a conduit of christ for i am his possession i'm no longer a slave to fear and insecurity that stops me from speaking and professing the word of god that is relevant in the season for my life in the mighty name of jesus no abortion has got a hold over my life in the name of jesus no sin no cohabitation as a power over my life i am a conqueror in Jesus' name i am a child of my father because i have believed in his name i have believed in jesus christ he has given me a right to be his child in Jesus' name i stand as a child of god and just as the prodigal son in this moment i thank you my father and i thank you my lord that i've come back to my father and he has restored me back to glory in the name of jesus he has restored back the ring of victory the ring of royalty back to me in the name of jesus thank you father for giving me an opportunity to through jesus christ to be a co-heir to him a son by adoption and i do not take being the son of the omnipresent the omniscient god i don't take it lightly that i am your child in jesus name i am in christ therefore for i am a new creation i am a royal diadem in your hand i'm no longer condemned for i am in christ jesus the law of the spirit of life has set me free in christ jesus from the law of sin and death in jesus name i am victorious there is no room for insecurities there is no room for imposter syndrome there is no room for victimhood in my life in the name of jesus i am a child and i'm an heir to my father Father and fellow heirs together with everybody on this fast with Christ I have suffered with him so that I may also be glorified with him through faith in Jesus' name thank you father that I have died with you when Jesus Christ died he died for every sin he died for every fear for all forms of condemnation for every deception of the enemy and now I have risen again with him in Jesus' name I thank you my father that have been glorified with Christ through faith in Jesus' name. I have overcome for he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. All forms of temptation bow at the name of my Jesus in Jesus' name for I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that no voice of the enemy will lead me back to the trap of the enemy in Jesus' name. 
time, but I've overcome. For you are in me. You are greater than anything around me that tries to suggest any voice around me, any friend that is being used by the devil, even parents that are being used by the devil to speak negativity, to speak speak uh, words that demean my self-esteem in the name of Jesus. Uh, I have overcome in Jesus' name. Thank you that I'm fearfully. You, O oh Lord, have fearfully and wonderfully made me, O oh God. You have formed the inward parts of me. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Wonderful are your works. Uh, our souls know it very well. Thank you, Father, for taking time with me. Indeed, oh God, I have backing. I have backing. I have backing. Thank you for forming every inward part of me. You knew my body. You knew my structure. You knew my height. You knew my hair color, my eye color. You knew even and my knuckles you knew Ashikadaba, everything about me the number of hairs on my head how my toes would look like how my voice would sound like everything about me you have known it you carefully crafted it together in the name of Jesus oh Shakadaba, ha. now I break different because I have the Lord on my side thank you father that I am your workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good work Ah, Shikadabaha, which you, Father, prepared beforehand that we should walk in. Thank you for giving us a purpose worthy of us, Father, to let go of every fear, every insecurity, every imposter syndrome in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that we will not perish, but have eternal life. For you, our Father, so loved us that you gave us your only Son, and we have believed in you, Father. We have believed in you. We are established in you, O oh God, in Christ Jesus, who has anointed us, put a seal on us, and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Hey, Shakada Bahasa. Hey! My God, thank you, Father, for the seal, for the anointing to break the yoke of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke, the yoke of guilt, of shame. Thank you for putting a seal on us, for sending us forth, oh God, as a letter from the king to the kingdom. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Thank you, Father, for putting your seal, Father, on us, for putting that stamp of approval on us in Jesus' name. Thank you that we are not our own, oh God. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit within us, whom we have from God. Thank you, Father, that I am not my own. Thank you, Father, that everybody on this life is not their own. Thank you, Father, that we are healed by your wounds that Christ bore our sins in his body on the tree that we may die to sin and live in righteousness. Thank you that we are partakers of your divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Thank you, Father, that we are partakers of this divine nature. And what is your divine nature? You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. Ah, the Bible says that um, heaven is your throne and the earth your footstool. And to imagine that we are partakers of that divine nature. Ah, my God. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Father, for holding us, that we are held by you with your victorious right hand. So victory is certain. Victory is certain. We are not afraid, for you are with us. We will not be dismayed, because you, oh God, will strengthen us. When the devil tries to whisper, we know that we have the strength that comes from above. We are not afraid of anything. For you, Father, have given us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, of love, of self-control. Thank you, Father. 
for this power that oozes on the inside of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for self-control. Thank you that we are free indeed. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for setting us free. Thank you that we are saved by faith. And this is not our own doing, but it is a gift from you. We are thankful for this gift in Jesus' name. Thank you that we're delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of your beloved son. Thank you that we are led by your spirit. Ah, and we are your children. Thank you, Father, that we are more, more than conquerors in all things through you who have loved us. Thank you that we conquer all things in Jesus' name. Thank you that we are cared for by you and we can cast all of our anxieties on you. No anxiety, no fear, no nerves. There's God's power over us in Jesus' name. Thank you that you care for us, that we are the that we are the apple of your eye oh god oh we love you jesus thank you father that we are the pupil of your eye the bony of your eye that anybody who tries to touch us anybody who tries to mess with us if the devil ever tries us he has you to deal with Hey, oh my God. Thank you, Father. Ah, my God. Thank you, Father, for this new level, this new revelation that because we're the apple of your eye, the devil can't have us. The devil can't have us eh, on chokeholds. Ah, boniesiso, yangwari, wangu. The pupil of my father's eye. Ah, God, you're so good. Thank you, Father, that we are strong in you and we are the strength of your might. Thank you that for our sake, you made Jesus to be seen so that he who knew sin might become the righteousness of our Father. Thank you that you have created us after the likeness of our Father in true righteousness and holiness. Father, we are grateful that we have been made in your likeness. And who are you? You are mighty and strong in battle. Who are you? You are the faithful Father. You are a man of your words, the one that is holy, the one that is <laughs> the ah, who is the name that is above every other name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ancient one but who is relatable in every generation that's our god we thank you father for that thank you for loving us thank you that you are the same god yesterday today and forevermore thank you that you have set us free by christ and we stand firm and do not submit to the yoke of slavery in jesus name thank you father that slavery we are we are actually really no longer slaves to sin all forms of slavery have nothing to do with us. We are not condemned for we are in Christ Jesus. We are bearers of much fruit as we step forward. We are bearers of much fruit. We abide in you and you abide in us. And apart from you, we can do nothing. Thank you for abiding in us, oh God. Just as you are the vine and we are the branches, we continue to drink from you. You are such a confident father. You are God that does the most radical things. You are the God that brings a revival. You are the God that gives kingdom marriages. You are the God that gives everything on this earth is it good health is it money is it finances you are that god and we are partakers of that thank you father that you supply all of our needs according to your riches in christ jesus thank you father for providing for us oh god that we never have to feel shame for asking from other people for begging for borrowing because everything that we have ever needed is found in you is it joy is it peace is it hope everything that we need is it mercy everything is found in you thank you that we are the apple of your eye that you hide us in the shadow of your wings that we're literally covered by you oh god thank you for coming oh my god Ah, Shikakosa. Thank you for covering us under the shadow of your wings thank you for covering us under the shadow of your wings Thank you, Father, that we have been crucified with Christ. And the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Thank you that you have called us according to your purpose. And we know that all things work together for our good, for we love you. 
we love you father thank you that we're justified by your grace as a gift through redemption in christ thank you father that we are the salt of the earth we are moving out here salty because you have made us the salt of the earth hey shakadaba. we are out here adding taste ah god we are adding taste to the world because we are the salt of the earth thank you that we are seated set on a hill that cannot be hidden so that they may see our good works and give glory to you who is in heaven to you our father who is in heaven you guys like oh my gosh no temptation no fear no anxiety no depression nothing that is planted by the enemy can stop me from being a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden nothing that the enemy tries no plan of the enemy can stop me from being a city set on a hill from being in a kingdom marriage that is a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden Thank you, Jesus, that we are chosen, we are holy, beloved, and have a compassionate heart, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Thank you, Father, that we are protected and our life is hidden with Christ in you, our Father. Thank you that we are seated in you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, for we have been raised with him. We are redeemed through Jesus Christ's blood and our trespasses are forgiven. We are one spirit with our father. We have been joined to him. And because of our daddy, we are in Christ Jesus. And who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We are bold and have access with confidence through faith in our daddy. Thank you for access, O oh God. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. We are seated in Christ in heavenly realms and we are one with him. We are, we are holy and blameless before our father, even as he chose me in him before the foundation of the world. Thank you that we are loved with an everlasting love. And therefore you have continued to be faithful to us. Thank you that you have perfected us in your love and your perfect love casts out fear. Thank you that we are filled with you who is the head of all rulers and authority, which means that the devil is ah, six feet, 12 feet, 24 feet, a thousand feet. I don't know how many feet under there. He may consider himself a ruler, but you are seated above every other ruler. You rule every other ruler. You are the head of all rulers and authorities. Even the rulers of this earth, you sit above them. Ah! And that is my father. That is your father. That's the level we're talking about. Thank you that you have made us ambassadors for you. Thank you for making uh, an appeal for us. Thank you that we can do all things through you who strengthens us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much, guys, for joining this live. Thank you for just being a part and i know that the lord is going to be faithful to us to give us salty marriages that are uh, add salts that are light to the world that are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden like the paris you know the eiffel tower the dubai of marriages ah the dubai of marriage is the bali the bali the zanzibar hey the maldives of marriages is what the lord wants to give us hey
Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. Like, literally, goodbye. I will see you at 9 p.m. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let's continue to declare what God says about us. I've sent the uh, notes, or rather, what God says about us in the group. So continue to confess it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Goodbye.